Newsline. Hello there, very good evening. Welcome to another edition of Newsline. Privatization in Sri Lanka has uh, for many decades been a very taboo topic, be it privatization of state-owned enterprises, uh, privatization of the healthcare system, uh, but mainly privatization of education in Sri Lanka has gone back and forth for at least as long as I can remember. Uh, there were private universities that were introduced into Sri Lanka, a private medical uh, campus, if you will. Uh, but the same government that introduced this, of course, when they did come into the opposition, uh, took up arms and protest against it. Uh, and, and therefore, there has not been quite a stable policy, a view, a vision at least, for Sri Lanka's education sector. How are we to progress into the future to educate the next generation of Sri Lanka to discuss these matters and much more. We've got with us uh, today uh, Mr. Samarakon. He is the General Secretary of the Federation of University Teachers Association. Uh, a very good evening, Mr. Samarakon, and welcome to the show. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Samarakon, first things first. Uh, now, the education sector in Sri Lanka is, of course, uh, suffering several issues due to the economic crisis that has gripped our country. Uh, we have a massive issue of brain drain. Um, university lecturers are leaving the country, graduates in Sri Lanka are leaving the country, professionals are leaving the country. Uh, the figures are of course disputed, uh, but there is uh, some statistics on it. Uh, so, Mrs. Amarakon, starting off first with the privatization of education in Sri Lanka. Now, basically the system that is present in Sri Lanka is there only state-owned universities um, and uh, there are hundreds of thousands of students writing sitting for the advanced level examination but only a few get into the state-owned uh, university sector and then can graduate really uh, through this process of free education why is the federation of university teachers association against establishment of private universities in sri lanka well uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting us for this program uh, but when you say that uh, the Federation of University Teachers Association is against establishing private universities, I think that is factually wrong. Okay. Because we have not stated anywhere uh, like that, right? Okay. So our stance is not being against private universities or mm -hmm. anything like that. Okay. But our one of the clearest stance is that we are against commoditization of education. So privatization is a big issue. It is not as simple as you talk about it. Mm. So privatization have a lot of consequences. Mm. Already there are a lot of private entities in Sri Lanka, private mm. schools, mm. Uh, so-called private campuses, right. whatever. And even within the universities, there are sort of uh, courses which are offered uh, privately. Uh, privately. Or, or, for, or for money. O offered for money, right? Okay. So, but privatization as a concept, mm -hmm. so it has various meanings, various uh, implications. Mm. So, those are the things that we need to be largely concerned about. When you say that uh, uh, the, the Sri Lankan government is going to establish private mm. universities, mm. why the government wants to establish private oh, universities? Oh, the government wants to provide a legal framework for so the establishment the government of private universities. Uh, already if through BO. So already through BOI and mm -hmm, other mm -hmm. uh, uh, other mechanisms, the government have provided uh, uh, access for private entities. Now look at all these uh, mushrooming uh, universities in uh, in, in urban but, but cities. But Samarakon, there, there's a small distinction there because uh, the private universities, as you speak, that are present here in Sri Lanka, uh, they are not directly allowed to um, grant a program, or they. They, they get their content, they get their course content, uh, they get the material, even the degree is awarded from a foreign university. It's not the local um, bodies or these institutions, uh, as they were, uh, that awards the degree. It's always a foreign degree from a foreign university that is awarded through this institution in Sri Lanka. So technically what the government seems to be proposing at least is to allow these foreign universities to come and uh, put their roots here in Sri Lanka? Yeah, well, I think uh, to establish a university 
uh, is a difficult thing and it's a long process okay if you if you if you, if you look at the original concept of the university mm -hmm. the idea of the university itself is a complex thing okay now uh, universities like peradenia or kalambu mm -hmm. they have a long history yes. and long tradition mm. so in that sense to establish a university overnight by building a uh, 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 place I mean, uh, co constructing a university with buildings I only. Mean, in, in defense doesn't of the government, that I don't think they, yeah. they, they intend on establishing so it the, overnight. The, the, that, is, that, is, that is where this myth about private universities But are. the current situation, Mr. Samarikon, is the fact that there is no legal framework in Sri Lanka yeah. for the establishment of a private university, yeah. even if a private university or, a, or, a, or a, a person running a private university who is interested in establishing one here in Sri Lanka wants to do it they can't do it because there are no laws so we have not been a, we have not been against bringing any piece of laws to mm. establish any entity okay so our problem is not that mm. our problem is as futa mm -hmm. very clearly mm -hmm. about the 17 state universities okay so we argue don't do anything at the cost of the existing 17 universities you can do whatever you want to do outside this 17 universities that is our clear cut policy right so right now what we do is the mm -hmm. government policy has been to defund the state universities and mm. redirect those money allocated for the universities to promote private education that is what we are against we are not against uh, uh, encouraging private entities or whatever to establish mm. proper universities mm. with uh, proper regulations etc mm. uh, in the private sector mm. so let let the private sector do what the private sector wants to do mm. but not that the government should uh, uh, weaken the existing system and uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of letting this collapse and uh, and get the private sector to flourish. So that is not the way to do it. So, so you our the government is, is diverting money that is due to the state sector universities and you know funneling it towards promoting private education in Sri Lanka. What what do you really mean? by the form of advertisements or, or are they just not giving enough money for state sector universities to run actually what do you mean? actually the private sector right now mm -hmm. even when we we'll, uh, observe the existing entities mm -hmm. so they are running at a loss right because okay. because because there is a very strong state sector so that is the problem for the private sector when there is a very strong is state sector the private sector cannot compete with it right mm -hmm. so what it wants the government to do is to weaken the existing state system so that mm. is the strategy of this entire thing mm. so therefore ultimately what will happen is right now we are educating more than uh, nearly 2 lakhs of students annually mm. right okay. uh, in all these 17 universities okay. so if the government is going to cut funds and uh, uh, stop uh, permanent recruit to the universities etc mm. so this uh, 200,000 students will be uh, at a disadvantage right mm. so they they will face the consequences so mm. that is our problem so that is what we are arguing against right mm. so we are not arguing against uh, bring, bringing laws etc but we want the government to assure that these 17 universities will be further strengthened mm. and they would be provided with sufficient fundings and human resources resources etc but that has not been happening for a long period right now right mm. so if if you look at the figures from 2017 onwards mm. so in 2017 the state universities accommodated annually nearly 30000 students okay right so that time the annual budget allocation was around 3.5 mm. uh, from the gdp okay right right now the university system accommodates annually 60000 students okay but this, but the allocation is half of that so okay. you see from 2017 to 2023 mm. the annual allocations have gradually declined mm. while the student number the intakes have Horizon and it, it has doubled that it has mm. been doubled. Mm. So this is the problem mm. the resources have depleted while the student intakes have risen mm. so we this is the case this is where we argue that the state uh, is really disowning the universities its policy has been to encourage private entities the problem is not encouraging or promoting private entities but problem is you have left the state system to collapse so that is the problem so mm -hmm. right now if you look at 
the salaries of the academics have been slashed uh, by thirty-six mm. percent, mm. and the annual capital. Uh, when you say thirty-six percent, you mean the taxes? Taxes due to the tax. So that is mm. also part of this entire strategy to weaken the university system because once the. But but Mr. Samarakon, I mean, just to be fair, since there is nobody representing the government here, of course, to argue on behalf of them, um, all professionals have been taxed at six percent in the first bracket, twelve percent in the second bracket up to 36 percent in the final bracket that is not targeted at you know university lecturers alone uh, then you spoke about uh, the budget allocated for university or, or for the uh, education ministry i believe in whole uh, has been slashed to a certain degree uh, budgets of all ministries have been slashed uh, sans the defense ministry i believe um, for good reason or not um, that i know i don't know uh, however Sri Lanka is going through an economic crisis. So, in that context, do you think that the actions of the government in, you know, reducing the allocation uh, for the Ministry of Education and imposing taxes on not only university lecturers but doctors, um, teachers, even people employed in, you know, the private sector, do you think that can be interpreted as a targeted move to collapse the state university system in Sri Lanka? Uh. Well, well, let, let's think that uh, it is not a targeted movement, but okay. but the repercussion of that is going to definitely weaken the system further. Mm -hmm. Now, if you now the health sector, education sector, so these things should be the priority of the government, mm -hmm. right? When the budget allocations uh, are made, mm -hmm. so for long these uh, sectors have been uh, neglected. But but Mr. Samarakon, let's just move a little. Let's just go to the history a bit. Now, let's take prior to the economic crisis. Um, I believe CITEM was established before the economic crisis. During that time period, what was the stance of FUTA regarding the establishment of CITEM, the private medical college? Actually, uh, FUTA never took a stance on any, I mean, uh, on private uh, universities. Okay. But, okay. Uh, but uh, members of FUTA, so they, they were free to take uh, their individual stance. Okay. So, but as FUTA, we, we never uh, had a policy to sort of uh, 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 policy against private universities like that. But mm. our stance always has been to safeguard the state university. Mm. So that is very clear. Mm. But uh, on on private education, we have an argument, as mm. I told you. Mm. So education should be education from wherever you get it. The student should get proper education, education which uh, actually makes you a human being, not mm. just that uh, education should make you an uh, employable graduate uh, or mm. should uh, uh, take you to the workforce uh, right, uh, directly. Mm. So that is not the edu purpose of education. Mm. So our, our, our arguments, you, you have to understand, are always based on the philosophical understanding of education. Mm. So, so therefore, we don't have a problem if there is a proper private university like Harvard or Yale or whatever, right? So these are highly recognized uh, institutions in the world. Actually, so but 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 as, as are not FUTA now since bodies, now right? since since FUTA is you know not against uh, certain private entities coming and yeah. setting up shop here and and, and providing education uh, to Sri Lankan students as well as foreign students, if only they provide a fully rounded education. Does the FUTA have any uh, documentation, any study, any analysis done on what really a well-rounded education means? Yeah, we have actually, we have, uh, our academics have pro produced several uh, studies uh, okay. on, the, on private universities. So mm -hmm. some academics argue that uh, the idea itself is strong because in the entire world there can't be there there have not been private universities as such because when you say a private university uh, the idea simply is that that uh, or, uh, that institution may be look for profit so actually education is not for profit in so entire world considers that so problem in sri lanka's private education is that it is always uh, uh, it aimed at uh, making more profit. So that is the problem because education can't be solved uh, uh, for, a, uh, for, for a fee. Right? But then, but then on, the, on the other side of the spectrum, Mr. Samarakon, is that there is no free lunch because when you say education is not a commodity, I mean, I definitely agree with you that yeah. it shouldn't be a commodity, at least 
um, on, on a conceptual basis. But the reality of the world is that at the end of the day, someone has to pay for it. Because as, as university lecturers, a uh, uh, salary is provided. Yeah. Someone is paying your salary. I mean, it's not coming out of the sky. Uh, taxpayers are paying salaries. And, and, and the country as a whole uh, will be the one who are footing the bill for the education that is provided free of charge to the students in Sri Lanka. So at the end of the day, when you come to a situation where the country is bankrupt for whatever reason, um, who is going to foot the bill? Yeah, well, it's, a, it's a case of practicality. I'm not uh, disagreeing yeah, this, with you. This, this pricing, <laughs> pricing, uh, various causes. I, mm. uh, I think uh, uh, it's not like pricing any any other commodity, right? Mm. Now, for example, uh, an engi uh, engineering degree mm. at the Open University may cost a student around four lakhs mm. for for entire four years. Okay. But uh, for that same amount of money, mm. uh, I don't think uh, the private sector can provide that. Mm. All right. Mm. So if you if you want to uh, send your ch uh, child to a private university, so at least you would have to pay four million for that, mm. right? So that's a huge money. Mm. So but when you produce uh, education through state on the organizations, the universities, mm. so there is a lesser cost for that, right? So because the, the there's uh, a lesser cost for that. You yeah, mean. even less less cost, less 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 expense on less the part of the yeah. student. That doesn't necessarily mean that the that cost the, is drastically the, less. It's drastically less. Not not for the student. I mean, there is of for course the, the, the main the the the, the university yeah, because that is that is that is collectively produced. So education is owned by the people. It is a right of them. Mm. When when private sector okay. produces it, so <laughs> they would charge a huge fee. Mrs. Amarakon, you say education is a right of the people. Now, I am, of course, I like to think that I am a member of the general public. I sat for my ordinary level examination. I sat for my advanced level examination. But I didn't receive entrance into universities as my right, even though I passed both exams. Yeah. So how fair is that? Yeah, there, there have been other avenues. Né? For example, the Open University, just with three A-level passes, anybody can enter. So mm. that is also one of the uh, best state universities in Sri Lanka, right? Mm. So there is English medium education, there is IT education, engineering education, everything but, but, is there. But is, is your right? point, Mr. Summer Cohn, that every student who passes the GCE advanced level examination can enter some university? In Sri Lanka, be it uh, you know direct entrance through the Z score system into you know Colombo, Peradeniya, Kalaniya, whichever university, uh, or um, uh, people who don't get that can enter into the open university. So there is enough space for everyone. Well, I, is that I, what I was saying? telling that there are avenues, but I'm I don't also see that all those who pass GCA level, I mean, they they may not want to enter university because there are other programs, other courses they mm. would. Well, some students would first uh, uh, do a job and then opt for education because mm. it is but not but compulsory. But my question that is, Mr. is there enough space for everyone? Uh, yeah, that, that, that's that's a problem. That that's a problem. But can the private sector provide that space for everyone? So that is similarly we can ask from the private sector because when the private sector produces things, mm. it is for a price, and but those who are <laughs> those who can pay the price only can afford. But education. Mr. Samarakon, on 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 the other side of that, now when you say. We can ask the private sector. We can't really ask a private sector uh, university in Sri Lanka because there's nothing as such. There are only institutions yeah. that provide uh, the degrees or whatever qualifications that are awarded by foreign universities. And when you say we need to make education more affordable to the general public, now say, for example, I wanted to pursue my education, of course, in the field of law. Mm. And um, if I wanted to get an LLB mm. in Sri Lanka, there is only very limited access, of course, even at the open university or you know the law faculties in other universities. So if I'm not able to get into any of those universities, even after passing the advanced level examination, I need to pay not just the course fees for the institution in Sri Lanka, but also at a dollar rate or a euro rate to a foreign university. So isn't that making education less affordable in Sri Lanka? Yeah, the accessibility is the first thing. So UNESCO also accept that the, one of the most important uh, 
phenomena in, in education system is accessibility. So mm. anybody should be able to access education mm. at a lower rate of price. Mm. Or, uh, so I accept that. So mm. the, the Sri Lankan students uh, uh, who pass uh, GCA level, advanced level, are actually uh, in a way, so uh, most of them cannot enter a state university because there is huge competition. Yes. So you have been subject to that. Yes. So I, I feel sorry about that. But at the same time, uh, what the state should be doing uh, there, right? So the state should uh, make education a priority because education uh, is something uh, that the state should consider as a as an investment, but but right, right now, but our Singapore. state is sort of considering it as an expense. Yeah, as a ex as a big expenditure on on the budget. But Mr. Samarco, right. now now the, at the current juncture that Sri Lanka is in, I mean, of course, we can talk about what happened, what should have happened, what could happen in the future. But at this point of time, do you think the state really can practically do the things that you are suggesting? Can they do that? Yeah, whether the state can do it or not, uh, a state should organize it because a state has that capacity mm. because a state is the most uh, capable institution to do that. Mm. When you allow private sector to monopolize a field like education, mm. I think uh, uh, definitely the, the disadvantaged people, the marginalized people would not get access to that. Mm. Only some uh, segment of population who can pay a fee, right? Who can buy it mm. would be benefiting. Huh? Mm. So this is not fair. On the other hand, mm. so there should be a fair system. I accept your argument. So whoever wants to uh, enter a university, so there should be that uh, uh, avenue. Mm. So a state system should expand. Mm. But right now, the state system is facing a crisis, mm. there is defunding, mm. and while the state system is collapsing, mm. so government uh, proposes, uh, as education. you said, private education. But, but just for the record, Mr. Samarakon, the FUTA is not against the establishment of private universities in Sri Lanka as long as state universities are protected. Yes, yeah, that is our stance. That is our stance for long. Thank you very much, right. Mr. Samarakon. And that's how it was on Newsline tonight. Thank you very much for tuning in. Until we meet again, take care and God bless.